MRI breast screening is a recommended secondary screening method for high-risk women in addition to mammography. MRI-guided breast biopsy is a minimally invasive option for diagnosing the clinical outcome of suspect lesions identified by MRI. The Suros ATEC Sapphire and ATEC Emerald breast biopsy systems are designed for this procedure. Both systems are compatible with most magnets, breast coils, and targeting software. In this video presentation, we will demonstrate the pillar and post method using a manual targeting technique. The standard ATEC MRI handpiece is used during the procedure. Once the patient arrives in the MRI suite, an IV is started to facilitate the injection of the contrast agent to aid in visualization of suspect tissue. The patient should be reminded of the importance of remaining still during the procedure. Clean the patient's breast and position in the breast coil with enough compression to immobilize the breast. Be sure the breast tissue protrudes through the immobilization plate. The skin surface should be taut in the immobilization plate and clearly protruding. Set the pillar column to zero in both the X and Y planes. Place the fiducial into the needle guide turret. Move the patient into the bore of the magnet for the first sequence of images. Perform a localizing scan to confirm that the area of interest is located within the compressed breast and the fiducial is clearly visible. Administer contrast agent and start the recommended scanning sequences. The manual targeting method will only require an axial sequence of images. To determine the lesion location coordinates using manual calculations, use the fiducial as a reference point. Review the images and scroll to identify the image containing the fiducial. Record the slice number of this image. Create a guideline across the image at the level of the fiducial marker and apply the guideline to all images. Scroll through the images to identify the lesion for biopsy. Stop at the slice you believe best illustrates the center of the lesion. Record the slice number of this image. Count the number of slices from the fiducial image to the lesion image. Multiply the number of slices by the slice thickness. This is the X value and the distance the pillar will move in the horizontal direction. Record this value. While still at the lesion image, use the measuring tool to draw a vertical line from the center of the lesion to the guideline previously established. This is the Y value and will be the distance the pillar will move in the vertical direction. Record this value. Inside the imaging suite, position the pillar and post to the new X and Y values. This will be the point of entry into the breast. Move the patient back into the magnet. With the new pillar and post positioning, rescan the patient to ensure proper targeting. Scan the patient in the axial plane. To confirm proper biopsy position, scroll through the images to confirm the lesion and the fiducial line up accordingly in the same image. Using the measuring tool, draw a line on the image from the skin surface to the center of the lesion. This will identify the depth or Z value of the lesion. Record this value. This distance, plus 2 centimeters, is where the proximal side of the black ring can now be set on the introducer sheath. Shuttle the patient back out of the magnet to begin the biopsy procedure. Remove the contents of the introducer localization set. Using a sterile cleanser, swab the breast at the target biopsy site. Remove the fiducial from the turret for injection of the anesthetic at the area of interest. Place the introducer stylet into the introducer sheath. Adjust the depth stop on the introducer sheath to the calculated depth, reading the depth from the side distal to the patient. Place the introducer sheath and stylet into the needle hub assembly. Holding the sheath in place, use a continuous clockwise rotating motion to advance the stylet into the breast. This motion will help minimize tenting of the skin. Tighten the hub on the needle guide turret to the calculated depth. While continuing to hold the introducer sheath in place, remove the stylet. Place the localizing obturator into the introducer sheath. 
Make certain that all instruments placed into the introducer sheath are inserted completely hub to hub. Ensure the side arm of the introducer sheath is tucked in to avoid catching on the magnet. Shuttle the patient back into the magnet. Acquire images in the sagittal and axial views to verify target accuracy. The localizing obturator will project as a signal void, appearing as a black dot on the sagittal image and as a black line on the axial image. Once the target has been confirmed, shuttle the patient out of the magnet bore and proceed with the biopsy. Turn the ATEC console on and take the MRI compatible handpiece and foot switch into the MRI suite. The ATEC MRI handpiece is equipped with 20 foot tubing, allowing the physician to easily perform the biopsy while maintaining patient safety with the console located just outside of the MRI suite. Remove the localizing obturator from the introducer sheath. Place the ATEC MRI handpiece into the introducer sheath at the desired starting clock position indicated by the numbers on the handpiece. The flat portion of the handpiece correlates to the cutting aperture. With this surface facing up, your needle will be at the 12 o'clock position. Core samples can be taken at any clock position depending on the location of the area of interest. Depress the foot switch to activate the biopsy system and continue to hold the foot switch down throughout the tissue acquisition sequence. Tissue acquisition occurs every 4.5 seconds. A beep indicates the end of one cutting cycle. Manual rotation of the handpiece occurs just after the beep during the resting phase of the biopsy cycle. The ATEC handpiece acquires tissue samples until the foot switch is released and all necessary core samples have been retrieved. After tissue acquisition is complete, switch the console to lavage mode by pressing the button marked lavage. Lavage continuously irrigates and aspirates the biopsy cavity, allowing loose tissue and other fluids to be cleared from the biopsy site. Lavage the cavity until the fluid collected in the tissue collection chamber indicates the cavity is clear. Switch the console back to biopsy mode by pressing the button marked Biopsy. Remove the ATEC handpiece while leaving the introducer sheath in place. To verify the successful biopsy of the area of interest, reinsert the localizing obturator back into the introducer sheath. Move the patient back into the magnet bore to acquire post-biopsy sagittal and axial image sequences. You are now ready to place a biopsy site marker. For this video demonstration, we will use the ATEC TriMark. Remove the localizing obturator and place the marker deployment device into the introducer sheath until the aperture indicator contacts the introducer sheath hub. To make sure this position is maintained throughout the deployment of the marker, hold the device in place with your free hand. Deploy the marker by pressing the plunger with your thumb. An audible and tactile click will confirm deployment. Slowly remove the deployment device from the introducer sheath. Shuttle the patient into the magnet bore for verification of marker placement. Once marker placement is verified, shuttle the patient back out of the magnet bore. Gently remove the introducer sheath from the breast. Slowly decompress and remove the immobilization plate. Immediately apply pressure to the biopsy site and when ready, assist the patient out of the coil. The cores are now ready to be retrieved from the filter chamber at the back of the handpiece. Place one hand on the handpiece and the other on the filter chamber. Rotate the filter chamber counterclockwise to disengage from the handpiece. Grasp the thin metal wire spatula in the tissue filter. Before pulling up on the wire, tilt the tissue filter basket toward the specimen collection dish. Appropriately dispose of all used ATEC product, such as handpiece, marker deployment device, canister, etc.